Gamification can be considered a buzzword of sorts today, whether it's learning how video games work or studying the science of what makes them so addicting. Today's focus is going to be on gamification in language learning apps and the pros and cons of that gamification when it comes to learning a new language. Hey internet, my name is Mark and I'm a senior at NYU studying computer science and linguistics. And about two years ago now, I made a video called Duolingo vs. Rosetta Stone, where I compared a more gamified language learning platform to something I considered a bit more traditional. Today, I wanted to talk about gamification on a more general scale, and about a month and a half, two months ago, an app called Heylingo reached out to me to see if I wanted to do a review on it. After looking at the free plan of their app for a little while and deciding I wouldn't have anything overly critical to say, I decided to give it a go. To be clear though, they're not sponsoring this video, nor do they have any sort of say in it, and I'll have my reviews throughout the video as we go, but the important thing is that you will see why Hey Lingo provides such a good example for some of these points. Also, a little disclaimer about myself is that I am no expert or professional on any of these fields. I study linguistics and I'm very fascinated in language learning and have been increasing that fascination for a while now, and everything I know about gamification comes from a few books I've read, some articles I've learned, and some of my game design studies. So all of this is based on my limited experience and limited research, and I have a little pet theory about language acquisition and how important linguistics is. That being said, just take it all with a little grain of salt. All of my resources will, of course, be linked in the description down below in the resources section. A lot of my knowledge on gamification, which again is as an average person and an end user, comes from my studies on game design and my fascination in gamification, which I became a little curious about a while ago when I had a bit of an existential crisis and wanted to try gamifying my life in some ways. That aside, gamification is, to the best of my knowledge, a way to create reward and punishment that is centered around how we behave as human beings. A very simple example of gamification is streaks, which makes use of a psychological fallacy called loss aversion. For example, in Snapchat, a streak is something that shows you how often you communicate with a friend, or not how often you communicate, but whatever. Or on an app like Hey Lingo, it shows you how consistent you have been with maintaining your language learning habit. A book that I came across a while ago by Yukai Cho is presenting gamification as built off of eight or more foundational points, something called Octalysis Design. I'll link an article about it in the description down below, but I say this because throughout this video I'll be building on oversimplifying these points in a way that I can understand them so that I can explain them slightly clearly throughout the video, so definitely check that article out, if not the book, if you're curious. and. Additionally, if you have any knowledge, expertise, or whatever on gamification, I'd love to hear in the comments down below, because the more you know, the better. So intro to gamification aside, what are the pros and benefits that it brings to gamifying language learning? Well, let's think about textbooks. Textbooks are pretty bland and dry most of the time, and in fact, textbooks aren't even meant to be read cover to cover. They're just another tool in your tool belt. Nonetheless, they can be dry and repetitive. On the other hand, apps are meant to be fun and engaging. If you take Hey Lingo and you strip it of all its wonderful aesthetics, uh, visual or sound, then it becomes kind of boring and not nearly as fun. The first pro of gamification is exactly that, aesthetically pleasing mediums that allow a user to engage on multiple levels. Fun little characters, small worlds to travel to, advancing with experience through different levels allow things to be more fun. It brings you into this world of language learning as opposed to things just being dry and repetitive and mundane. Another great thing about gamification, and something that I would consider to be one of its strongest foundations, is the ability to take what is arbitrary and turn it into something meaningful. For example, building off of the second point of Octalysis design, development and accomplishment, the introduction of things like experience, levels, and leaderboards allow a user to have some sense of being on a metaphorical journey. It turns advanced material on chapter 13 into more challenges on level 13. One thing I've been most curious about over the years is how websites, applications, and games approach the problem of progress. Showing a progress bar allows a user to feel super driven to get that last 5 to 10%, and then when they complete it, there's a whole new challenge of figuring out how to get that user to be determined to fill it up all over again. While gamification has so much more to it, so much so in fact that it's impossible to get remotely close to talking about all of it in one video, I did want to touch on three big points. And so the third point is simply the social aspect of games and thus applications. 
The clearest way to demonstrate this social aspect is by looking at Heylingo's leaderboards. A while ago, I found the social aspect of language learning apps to be super fascinating, and over time, the multiplayer aspect of games has always been super important to me. Even though I don't know who any of these users are, it's amazing to see the simple fact that other people are working on the same things I am. Taking steps further along the journey I am on, finding a way to get on the leaderboard so that they can also see me on the same journey. All of these ideas, engaging mediums, sense of progress, social engagement, are purely aesthetic. What they impact, however, is how we as humans behave and function. Gamification itself might be arbitrary, but when we perceive and understand it, we give it a whole new sense of meaning. And when you're doing something that can be as tedious as learning a language, giving something meaning is very important. However, it does have its dangers and traps, even if done properly. But before we get to that, I want to just take a minute or two and talk about my first impressions of Heylingo and have a quick peruse around the app. Okay, change of scene, going to the past. I haven't scripted the actual video yet, but I wanted to put in something to capture my first impressions, pretty much. Right away, we have a map of everything. You can come from many different languages, which is great. And tapping on Japanese, for example, will bring me to Japanese. Very easy to get back and forth between languages. I love this split of topics. Uh, Ling app does a pretty similar thing where all the topics are split into lessons. You've got rewards, you've got leaderboards, which I think are great. What's nice, and I actually pointed this out in one of my, I think my second learning log. If you tap each shitori. word here, you can see what it translates to. So shitori is alone. No. No. Is of. Kodomo. Is children. So alone shitori. of child. I like that it breaks down each part is what I'm trying to get at. So really quickly, I'm going to exit that lesson. You can exit anytime you want, six correct answers, whatever. I kind of like that you don't lose progress uh, exactly. And then, so at the end of each lesson, you can review everything, which is very nice. And flashcards are good, but I'll get to those in a bit. I don't know how exact, again, these connections are, but Watashi. I don't really know what the direct translation is, but this breakdown is super nice. So let's go ahead and jump to French, which is a language I understand a lot better. <laughs> you understand me, I'm going to get it wrong. They understood us. Tu me so, comprends. French is a lot more mais literal, so you, me, understand. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really have an explanation mais. as to this, but I'm curious if there is one, I'm just missing it. And that's my biggest critique of like all language learning apps. You know, Duolingo has those bubble things, but I, they're good, but they're not thorough. But this app does not appear to have anything like that. I really like how customizable these lessons can be. Yeah, there's no instruction of, uh, I mean, no one wants to read about grammar. <laughs> I really have no expectations of learning apps to really have a here is how pronouns work, but I would love to see in each of these sections, if it just had like a, um, an extra little lesson that taught you the grammar of things, I feel like this could be a lot more useful for adults. For children though, I think it's fantastic or kids or whatever. The art's wonderful. The sound examples sound great for both Japanese and French. Yes, but um Yes, poha. Yeah, okay. I ask him, I suppose. Definitely a good tool to use alongside things, especially for Japanese, for example, to learn vocab. I love how the sections are split. I, in terms of using apps alongside everything else as a tool, I love this app because of A, it breaks things down, and B, it has everything going on. It's got great voice uh, or audio recording. The options are clear, they're associated with images. Here, I can go ahead and practice hiragana. I can associate ogenki desu ka with each of these characters, which is great. And I'm gonna assume this is hazard. It's not, so I can go ahead and look at each part. Oh, cheerful. Okay, so this is just the sound. Okay, maybe these breakdowns aren't so great. <laughs> but it's still nice to see the separation. Anyway, when you get done, you get little awards you just saw like I did there. Oh, we have a listen and choose the, oh, hello? Did I miss these? Oh my God, I missed this. Find out which word has been replaced. That's cool. Fill in the, this is very cool. Hold on, listen and choose the correct English sentence. Listen and choose the correct Japanese sentence. Study. Oh, that's actually awesome. I don't know what any of these mean, but you can specifically work on listening with that. Oh, and the, I guess it's not unlocked, but find out which word has been, or missing word in the sentence. Oh, genki, yeah. That's awesome. I like that it has this breakdown where you can do those specifically. That is very, very nice. Leaderboards of timing, you've got community stuff here. 
looks absolutely fantastic. I love it. Great way to acquire vocab and especially a great way to practice reading and writing. And as I just discovered at the end there, a fantastic way to do listening, especially when it's something like Danish and the language is so different that Jeg Spoger Ham turns into Jeg Spoger Ham. Alright then, if gamification is so great, then why isn't everybody doing it? Why isn't it more prevalent in the things that we do? If it's so great for language learning, why doesn't the US ask people to spend 30 hours a week in language learning apps? Well, I really don't know on a gamification scale, but when it comes to language learning apps, I have a bit to say about this wonderful ability of turning the arbitrary into meaning. A while ago, I made a video on how I think you can make the most of language learning apps, which you can find in this video here, so definitely check that out afterwards. But all in all, I don't think that you should rely on language learning apps alone. However, they do make a great tool. It's a great way to compete and make progress while having fun, but whether it's my pet theory of learning underlying linguistics or the advocated method of full immersion, these things cannot teach you a language in five minutes a day, as some adverts might have you believe. Additionally, all the stuff I'm talking about is for learning a language as an adult, the whole game changes for kids. On one hand, apps can be said to have many downfalls, like providing you with a certain subset of sentences that over time you might just learn to memorize. However, these are merely implemented in gamification. Earlier, I mentioned that gamification has the wonderful ability to turn the arbitrary into something meaningful. This idea can be dangerous because our incentives can end up being those meaningless things. For example, let's look at Snapchat. It made me realize that of the four or five streaks that I had with people, only one of them I've really had consistent conversations with. To spell it out, the streaks were the only thing I sought to maintain, and when I realized that people would take random pictures and send it to 10, 20, or 30 people just to maintain streaks, it started to really bug me. If you want to do this, by all means go for it, but to me, it wasn't intentional behavior. I would rather maintain a few really strong friendships than dozens of superficial streaks. Anywho, back to language learning, we can see that a very similar thing happens with streaks. Iterating once again that tools like Duolingo or Heylingo are just that, tools, you can easily get caught up in streaks and give yourselves a false sense of progress. One of my big critiques about Duolingo is how it can quickly become a game of short-term memorization, and then once you complete a lesson, you get a big flashy notification saying, congratulations, you've maintained your streak. Quite frankly, I like that this is less prevalent in Heylingo because if there's less of a reliance on a streak and it's more of just a nice reward, not a main focus. A gamified aspect such as maintaining a streak should be presented as a secondary reward, not a primary one, like looking at all of the words and phrases you've learned and how much you've improved over some period of time. Hey Lingo does a great job at that when it shows you what you went over and its relevance to past efforts. If you don't engage in the language you are learning and conscientiously improve your mistakes, you can fall into these traps of doing things solely for the superficial reward. If you're someone with a high streak, take a moment to think about what it might feel like when you lose that streak. I lost a 190 day Danish streak on Duolingo a while back, and with that went my Danish learning. When you lose this streak, you lose the thing that was tracking your progress, and suddenly it seems pointless to try again. Certainly it's not pointless, but just thinking about this in our minds can show us how easy it is to get caught up in these things. And it's not just streaks, it's levels, experience, all of your account data, so on and so forth. All in all, gamification is a strategy of engagement, but it becomes a dangerous trap when it's encapsulated within itself. I don't have the research or knowledge to dig into this more specifically, so feel free to combat me in the description down below, but it is this core idea that, to me and in my experience, can be one of the most dangerous things about gamification. The idea of giving the arbitrary meaning can be taken too far, so we have to self-moderate a little bit. That idea itself kind of covers my main issue with gamification in language learning, again, as an end user, but it can also make the other things, what I think are also important in language learning, feel a little too boring if you, again, don't self-moderate. If you get caught up in these aspects of gamification, what happens when you need to sit down and do the nitty gritty stuff? If you're so used to translating sentences about horses and ducks, then what happens when you need to try and produce a sentence to a native speaker, but nothing comes out or they don't understand what you've said, what is your reaction when there's no reward or punishment 
or feedback of any kind. My small pet theory is that as adults, learning the underlying linguistics of a language from what drives the pattern of être and avoir verbs in French to the myth of the subjectless sentence and the zero pronoun in Japanese can help speed up language learning. Now, I have no proof for this, of course. This is what I'm trying on my own adventure with Japanese. But even the most advocated and proven immersion techniques discuss needing to learn some of the complex grammar. While I'm not saying you have to go look at a textbook, in fact, I don't think you should look at a textbook in today's day and age, at least not heavily, I am saying that if you rely on language learning apps, the fun of them might take away the ability to sit down and do the dirty work sometimes. This video is unavoidably long, so the TLDR is that gamified learning apps are scarily good at abstracting a deeper level of meaning to a more surface level attention. Do this thing to get a streak and not translate this to learn the underlying pattern of that language. All you have to do is self-moderate, balance your daily hey lingo activities with some reading and writing pronunciation or grammar study. Again, that's my opinion. And lastly, the third thing that I wanted to present is an idea of mine that I don't even know if I fully agree with, but that is that gamification might be limiting. If I think that linguistics is super important to understand, especially the linguistics of your target language, then trying to gamify that, teaching someone the difference between transitive, intransitive, and diatransitive verbs through gamification seems like something that would be really hard to do. On one hand, I taught myself to pronounce hiragana and katakana, two of Japanese's writing systems, in about three or so weeks, and now I can do it pretty comfortably without references. On the other hand, Duolingo's intro lessons allow you to do four or five kana a day, and it will take a while for you to memorize them. Then on the flip side of that, you have Heilingo, which jumps right into full sentences. So being able to balance this idea of here are the full sentences, and then I will teach myself how to pronounce them on the side, I think you can find a very happy medium. But teaching you to pronounce things and teaching you the nuances of grammar is something that I think would be really hard to gamify. Is gamification limiting? I have no idea. My only question is, where is gamification's limit? When does gamifying something clash with the inherent difficulty of something? In the case of languages, what happens when verbs become so complex you have no choice but to try and explain them? again to an adult, or when sentences become so long that implicit memorization, something that someone might have gotten used to over the course of several levels, can no longer work. I have spent more time on this video talking about the traps of gamification, supposedly as a warning, maybe I'm biased, but gamification is something that really works at the end of the day. Board games and video games have brought something invaluable to the table, and it's wonderful that people have brought that into the educational sphere. I have no argument against gamification, simply how we use it, because we do have to moderate ourselves. Gamification is built to take advantage of human behavior, so simply be mindful of that. It's a wonderful engaging tool, and it's great to keep kids learning when they are driven by behavior more so than adults. And when you have an app like Heylingo with its fun characters, great graphics, wonderfully friendly interface, it can be a fantastic thing to give to a kid to keep them learning when they don't even realize it. In language learning, gamification is great to get you involved, but without spending the time to learn to read and write, to produce and interpret language on your own as an adult, What was I even saying? <laughs> Never mind. Someone just yelled. That's fun. Love this. Great. This is wonder. I'm... <laughs> Maybe they've realized honking will do nothing to change the situation. Gamification is wonderful <laughs> to get you involved, but without doing the nitty gritty stuff, like learning how to speak and write, how to produce language and interpret language respectively on your own, your language learning journey will be longer than you want it to be. Five minutes a day will not teach you a language, but it will be a great way to build a consistent habit. All right, this is where the final review comes in. Because I was reached out in the context of Duolingo versus Rosetta Stone, I wanted to use this wonderful rubric, but on a very much uh, less specific scale because 
I don't want to evaluate this against Duolingo or Rosetta Stone. I haven't been using it nearly as heavily. So using Heylingo, um, as much as I have, it's been a great tool to use. I have changed quite a bit uh, as a person over the last two years as a linguist and more specifically as someone who learns languages. So my emphasis on apps has become much less. So the lighter scale here, instead of using these, these arbitrary-ish points that I have, which weren't arbitrary once upon a time, we're just gonna say very poor, eh, okay, pretty well, and very well. This little mini four point scale, I suppose. I am learning Japanese, so most of my time spent these last two months or so has been learning Kana. If you want to check out my learning logs, you can in that playlist in the top right corner. So use of English. This is all about how reliant an app is on English. If I go ahead and I look at the yes and no phrasebook or something, something I would consider very poor is if they showed the English and then said translate this. So I'm gonna say this is, you know, pretty meh, a 2.5, if you will. Pretty average use of English. I don't think this is a horrible use of it. It's not very reliant on it, which is good. Uh, especially the fact that there are little activities here where you can just listen to Japanese and it, it doesn't always rely on English, which is the best thing. Kind of hard for an app to not use English, but yeah, it's, you know, it's pretty good. Listening activities, I will give a four. I think the audio clips are really good. From what I remember, Duolingo audio was not great. It's probably improved in the last two years. I don't know. The audio is very adaptive to your learning style. I think it's very clear. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. The fact that there's a female voice and a male voice there is to me a big deal, simply because it shows they put effort into it. It's very clear. I can identify, hey, that goes with this kana, all that fun stuff. So I think the listening, easy for. Reading segments, um, I'm gonna give it, I guess, like a, a, a one. There aren't really any reading segments, so it's kind of an NA, but as far as I know, there are more features coming to the app. Again, it's not really present on the app, so NA, one, two. Freshness. Another four here. I'm a really big fan of how they've organized this. The problem that I noticed with Duolingo was that when you got a lesson wrong, and I kind of touched upon this in the main body of the video, it would go to the end of your queue and you could kind of just remember what it was. So you didn't really learn anything. You just got a little memory test. You can specifically review that which you are having trouble with and you can see what is especially difficult, which I think is fantastic. And additionally to freshness, additionally to the whole gamified thing, there are so many ways you can learn. And I love that you can really explicitly choose that. I haven't really seen that. Duolingo is always a mishmash. Rosetta Stone doesn't have that at all, really. Vocab recall. This is one of those things where I'm gonna give it a four, but I'd also give other language learning apps a four simply because I think that's one of the strongest things about language learning app, learning vocab. I think the way that they do vocab in this is very good. You're taught words, you're taught phrases, and most importantly, uh, so going into Japanese, you have some wonderful categories. And this was something I noticed in my first impressions was the spread of categories. I love it. Very easy to find various things. And lastly, language retained, uh, NA here. I haven't noticed anything because I haven't been using it that heavily. So I haven't gotten too far into it. Plus my view on this would kind of be skewed because I'm not just using this app to learn Japanese. That's my little compared to my Duolingo versus Rosetta Stone, but not really because that was two years ago and everything's changed. Some quick notes is that all in all, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I'm super lucky they reached out to me. At first I was kind of like, oh, you know, this is really, it's very kid friendly, which is a very good thing, but it looks good. It sounds good. It's easy to use. I think it's much more beneficial now than when I first started using it because I can read hiragana and katakana pretty well in terms of like, or not read, sorry, pronounce. I can look at it and not have to look it up. Again, more on that in my learning logs, if you're curious. Every other Saturday. So the fact that you don't have to do Roman characters, very helpful. I like that it sets new goals along the way. Up here in the corner, my next goal is 50 words because I've only learned 23. Most of my time has just been experimenting. And I've also looked at the French and Danish to poke around a lot there. French is just as extensive as Japanese, just as ex extensive as Danish. And if you look on their website, there's a whole team of people for each of the languages. So yeah, my final overall review is that Hey Lingo does not seem to lose itself in being something that is an all-in-one encapsulated tool. This could be because my view is skewed or they've just done something very well that I haven't noticed yet in other apps. Based on this video, that's kind of what my bias would be, but also this is the most gamey, not gamified, but gamey platform. So it's, you know, something that's super kid friendly. When you get to a lesson, like I still feel frustrated, but it's more of a frustration of, oh, come on, Marks, like you know this rather than, oh, they showed this one at the beginning of the lesson, but I got it wrong. Uh, I don't remember what it was. I would say that it's format 
on a very objective level is very similar to Rosetta Stone from the four options for many things and the way that the lessons are ordered, but it's much more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> but also I put a lot of importance on immersion and linguistic study. So using this as a tool has been absolutely fantastic because again, it's, it's a much more fun aspect of my general study. Again, not sponsored by Heylingo. They do give me a free subscription though. So I'll leave a link in the description down below if you wanna check it out. For the free plan, you get five minutes a day, which I think is a great starter to get yourself warmed up, especially if you're looking to build a language learning habit, whether it be Heylingo or whatever, just start with five minutes a day. You definitely can't learn a language in five minutes a day. That's why I have such a big problem with some very big names that advertise that, but it's a great way to build a habit. Anyway, let's wrap up this whole video. So yeah, there it is. With all the dangers of arbitrariness and how gamification can make that meaningful, one of the important things is that gamification can be hidden or it can be very, very apparent. The design and aesthetics of Heylingo don't really hide it. And I think that's a really strong thing because it feels like you're playing a game the whole time. Even though it's a great tool, it feels like less of one. So therefore, you know it's a game and you know that at some point you do have to do the nitty gritty. It's not trying to be a replacement for the nitty gritty. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me throughout this video. I do appreciate it and I'd love to hear any and all thoughts, questions, comments, and concerns in the comments down below. If you're curious about language learning and how my self-experiment with my pet theory of linguistics is going, you can find my Japanese language learning log in the top right corner. And if anything has helped you in this video, let me know. And if anything has helped you in your own language learning journey, I'd love to hear it because I'm always ears and eyes open to other strategies. Nonetheless, thank you so much for watching yet again. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome and keep learning. See you next week.